two things. I want to add a new feature to my Excel spreadsheet template, and I want to try to use chat GPT to do it. Let's go. Back in 2018, I made this my year in pixels template for you to be able to track your mood. So you input uh, how each day uh, went on a scale of one to five, if there was a good day or a bad day. That way you could track to see how your year went. So if, if you had a lot of bad days in a row, that means you either had bad luck or you're going to make a change in, <laughs> in your life so that hopefully you can change uh, those bad days into good days. So the way this template works is you use the drop downs and select it, and then it uses conditional formatting to change the color of the cell uh, to match the scale. And this is done by conditional formatting. If you go to home under conditional formatting, you can manage rules, this worksheet, and it has all the conditional formatting rules. Recently, I've had some people asking, how do you change these colors? So let's say if you wanted to use uh, purple instead of font, instead of red. But the problem is if you change it over here, over here, it's still going to be red because of the, the rules. So you can see here when we go into the conditional formatting rules manager to change the cells to red, we have this applies to this whole range of cells here. If we edit the rule, it'll say format cell. So any cell in this range that can use the number five, that's going to fill it to red. So we want to change it though to the color to purple, but there is no way to change this color inside the rule to match this color of the cell that I know of. So I've heard about this chat GPT, so I wanted to try it out for myself because number one, I heard that this could replace Google one day. And then the second thing that's interesting is I heard it can actually write macros for you, which if you know me, uh, it's very interesting. That's right up my alley. So they say this is potentially going to replace Google or search engines one day, uh, but it's still early. So I've heard that this is, um, you know, it's not always 100% accurate. It's like talking to a person, person's not always right. And so this isn't always right. So like if I ask a qu question or tell it to, um, let's say, list the 10 tallest roller coasters. Here are the 10 tallest roller coasters in the world. So yes, correct. Correct. See, so as you can see, even right here, it's not, it's not in order. This one <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. And then plus it's counting the height of the tower, not the coaster itself. And you have Wicked Cyclone at 209, like, so where's Fury 325, which is 325 feet tall. So basically, uh, this list is not correct, so um, you can't always take everything that ChatGPT says as, <laughs> as being 100% accurate. You can actually give them feedback and say that this isn't true. Okay, getting back to Excel, let's try some. I'm not sure how specific you have to be, so if we do... Create a VBA macro to make new conditional rule where range is equal to five, then it's the fill color to same color as in cell P12. Let's see what that does. To create a new condition for me where the range is for it. Here we go. So it's starting to type out a macro for us. So range gets the range. This is the color from P12. So to run this macro. All right. Let's copy and paste our code. Yes. So let's, let's delete all our rules. So we have nothing in here at the moment. Now if we go to view, we go to macros, make something up for a second, and let's copy and paste that code. Let's see what happens. Ah, so if we go over to the rules here, um, 
Don't know why these are still in here. It looks like this is the one that it made. So it has the range. And if the cell value is 5, it changes it to this color. So again, if you go change this to purple, or it doesn't automatically update these, but if we run our macro again, what it does, it makes a new rule. So now there's two. So if we delete the first one, then it changes those two. So what we go back to our chat and say, write a Excel VBA macro to delete all the existing conditional formatting rules. So it'll give us another code. This code will delete all condition formatting from the active sheet. And then it actually tells you how you would change it to specify a specific seat sheet. So if we just take part of this code and we go to ours, so now the first thing it'll do, it'll delete all the active conditional formatting rules and then we'll apply ours. So let's try this. If we change this to another color, what do we want? Pink? Sure. So now if we run this macro should delete the purple conditional formatting and then apply the new one. So it should change these to pink. Let's see. Run. There it is. So then what we could do is we could add a button here. So we had, it doesn't change the colors on the fly, but we can still just add a button. Maybe say like, call it update colors and then we can assign this macro so if we change this color again it'll update it so now we want to do that same thing for the other values so we could I think I just copy and paste this probably. Instead, change. So we want to do the number four, which is 13. And change this to three, which is 14, and so on. So now if we change four and three, some other colors. Update. So one doesn't do anything as we it deletes all the, the previous rules we had, but you can see each time it's adding these rules. So that's pretty cool. So we have this code. Yeah, it's pretty simple, but again, I didn't have to write any of it. It is almost all written directly by chat GPT. It even gave me suggestions about to do this so that's that's pretty cool i, I kind of feel a little obsolete now so this thing is crazy and <laughs> kind of gets cooler and cooler but also scarier and scarier so now so on my sheet i have the update uh, colors and i have that updated now for all the numbers so i've copied and pasted the, this code So if I update this, all the numbers should work now. But I also want to have a, a clear all the values if you want to start over like that. But um, if you have a lot of work in here, uh, if you accidentally click this, that's not going to be good. So I want to have it ask, you know, make, come up with a message box that says, are you sure you want to clear all the values, yes or no? 
So I go to chat GP, GPT. I type in, write a yes or no message box asking if the user is sure he wants to clear the cell contents. So now it starts writing the macro. Instead of just writing like a yes, no, simple thing, it actually is going back to what I specified before and is making the macro for that specific range. So now I can, I don't even have to like really edit the code. Even tells you like what the result will be and how to apply it. But if I just clear this, copy this, go over here. Back to my sheet. Throw in, throw in some values here. So if I hit clear now, it says, are you sure you want to? No, nothing happens. Are you sure you want to? Yes. So that's really cool. So, <laughs> so when I typed this in, I thought it would just maybe like spit out this part right here. But the fact that it also kept the range from the first time I asked is pretty cool. So there you have it. And yeah, I mean, these, this macro is pretty simple. It wouldn't take, you know, too long to do, but when chat GPT can just spit it out really quick like that, it <laughs> makes it pretty <laughs> tempting to want to use that instead. But again, I think it goes, I think it's, in the end, I think chat GPT is going to be a tool to use, not going to completely replace people. It's going to be a tool to use because as you can see, I, you know, I did have to modify uh, the code a little bit myself. And so this was just a first and a quick example of how you can use chat GPT uh, to quickly make macros for your Excel templates. I'll be experimenting with this more and we'll hopefully have um, some more tips and tricks in the future. Thanks for watching. See you.